Yeah. Hi, Amini. How are you? Yeah. Hi. Thank you. I'm good. So, can you tell us something about yourself? I'm Yamini Kothari and I've been in IT industry from last 9.5 years. I started my career with non-production and production activities where I was doing deployment for various releases and uh, package upload. I was doing this using uh, shell scripting in, in, in Linux using Bash. After that, I moved to manual testing where I was uh, working, uh, like gathering the requirements from the client, writing test cases, executing them, creating defect sheets. And okay. After that, I moved to automation testing okay. where I started working in Selenium with Java, also on uh, API testing with Rest Assured. And mm -hmm. I have knowledge on BDD, Kukumbar. Great. So we create our projects in Maven. Mm -hmm. Then push them to Git. So, and after that, we use Jenkins for build release. And we use Agile methodology in our project for sprint mm -hmm. ceremony. Mm -hmm. Fine. Fine. Okay. Can you tell me about your test automation framework? So we are using modular framework where we are using uh, test driven as well as data driven framework. Hmm. Then like we have separate uh, test scripts. Hmm. We also have object repository where we are keeping all our web elements and their locators. Hmm. We are like having uh, uh, screenshots for the failed test cases. Hmm. We have resources for all the driver related. So, right, right. Okay, okay. So, great. So, whenever you get this question in a real time interview, you can answer on these basis. Is the diagram visible to you? Yes. Yeah. So, what do you have here? So, first of all, you have an application under testing. So, you have a Chrome browser. For now, ignore this. Uh, I, I I was trying to paste Edge, then Opera, Firefox, which are which are the different browsers that your application will support. It's a web based application, and you will be supporting all these browsers. Then you will have parallel test execution, so you can also execute one single test parallelly in multiple browsers. That is also possible, right? So you can go for parallel execution. Then from where you would read the input data. So you can read the input data from an Excel file or you can read it from a notepad file, right? Again, you will be maintaining the object repository as well. The reporting mechanism. So you'll be using extend reports or allure reports, right? Then what do you do? You have multiple functions. So one is your business function. You will be executing the scripts. You'll be running the script. You will have some generic functions, some common functions. When I say common functions, so within the common functions, for example, I'm telling you, you will have uh, controls, right? Like text box or a radio button. What are the actions on them? So those particular things you will have, right? And then the extended functions you have. You also have a configuration file. For example, you have to run your automation on multiple URLs. So those things you will be putting in your configuration file. It is a configuration. As the name itself suggests, you can configure that in the beginning and then you can update the parameters as and when it is required. You have page objects, you have utility libraries, you have repository, GitHub. You can run your initiate test from Jenkins, Team City. All these things are your CI CD. So all these things you can explain. So one or two lines, if you can explain for all these components, it would make it somewhere around two to three minutes or even more, right? And this can give a fair idea to the interview that you have a sufficient knowledge of all the components like that, right? But yeah. this is how you can cover your answers, right? With respect to this, what is your test automation framework, explain your test automation framework, the key components that we saw, right? All these components you can explain. Okay. Increase the timeline. Okay. Yes, yes, with the timeline. Great. Wonderful. Okay. Now, uh, you are telling about BDD. So, what is the difference between hooks and the step, def uh, sorry, what is the difference between hooks and the background keyword? So hooks are of two types, before mm -hmm. hook and after hook. Mm -hmm. 
right before hook it will include uh, basically technical things hmm. and uh, background uh, will be executing before every scenario hmm. and before hook will execute before the background so first before hook will execute and it will set up all the technical things and hmm. after that background will execute and after that our scenario will execute like background is going to execute before every scenario mm -hmm. before every scenario okay so now if i have kept the background keyword in one feature file let's say i have two feature files one is for login and one is for search if i have kept the background keyword only in the login feature file is it going to be taken care in the search feature file as well yes okay are you sure for that yes because background will run before each and every scenario hmm hmm okay fine see see when i say background keyword right it is a keyword which is explicitly defined for that particular feature file so if you want background keyword in any other feature file as well then you will have to define background keyword in that feature file explicitly for those scenarios of the feature file but when i say hooks so hooks you have rightly told you have before and you have after if i tell you about hooks it is a kind of a global setting that is applicable to all the files or all the tests that are there in your automation framework right so mm -hmm. that is what the difference between the and background is actually a keyword hooks we create as a class right okay when i say keywords which are the other keywords that you have used in your test automation framework we have used uh, given when then great tag these are the annotations and mm -hmm. also these use scenario keywords. outline right scenario outline okay but scenario outline okay what is the difference between scenario and scenario outline uh, scenario outline is used for multiple users like we can provide examples and inside that we can write how many times we have to execute it for the multiple users we can provide the data inside examples for scenario outline mm. right yes and for scenario it is going to be executing for like it will execute for single time okay great wonderful scenario outline is used when you have to deal with the parameters for example you have a login screen you have to pass parameters for username and password so you would use the scenario outline there with uh, this username and password as the parameters like this less than and greater than kind of arrows you are using in that and scenario is for single single level okay great what is the difference between find element and find elements so find element will return a single element and find elements will return a list of web elements and if uh, no such element is there then find element will return no such element exception and find elements will return a list of zero elements okay correct see find element it will return the first matching web element which the locator will discover and you rightly said it will give you no such element exception right whereas find elements it is related to the list of multiple matching web elements and it will return you an empty list right okay what do you know about weights in selenium yeah so we have smart weights in selenium Mm -hmm. there are three kinds of weight implicit mm -hmm. weight explicit weight and fluent weight so implicit weight is basically um, whenever we are waiting for a element and mm -hmm. it will wait for the entire time uh, mm -hmm. whatever we have mentioned even if the element is visible before that time like we have mentioned for 20 seconds Right. element got visible within 10 seconds so right. the implicit weight will still wait for 20 seconds only mm. but in explicit weight um, we are waiting for a specific element until the expected condition is fulfilled and mm. after that 
like if there are 20 seconds and element got visible in 10 seconds so rest 10 seconds will be skipped and okay. in fluent weight we are using polling like mm -hmm. how many times we have to execute a condition mm -hmm. like in what is the frequency that we have to execute that condition repeatedly right right okay see uh, implicit weight is a kind of a global weight which you would be defining for all the elements for in that particular class explicit weight can be defined for some particular element in that right and fluent weight is a kind of a polling weight okay now can you tell me an example where you have used fluent weight I'm not used. Fluent. Not used. Okay. Can you give me an example? Okay. Which weight you have used in your test automation framework? Both implicit and explicit. Both. Okay. Um, so can you tell me an example where you have used explicit weight? Mm -hmm. Any, yeah, any example? Hmm. Whenever I'm waiting for a specific element to get visible. Okay, which what kind of element? When you say specific element, right? So what kind of Any element? Any specific web element. Any specific web element. Okay. What are the conditions that you have used in that explicit weight? Like I've used ignoring stale element reference exception dot class. Mm -hmm. And after that I've provided uh, until the condition should be met and the Locator should be visible. Locator should be visible or uh, you uh, you can say when you want to, when you are trying to interact with an element, hmm. you can use explicit weight there. When you want to wait for that element to get loaded or you are waiting for that drop down option to get selected, right? So you can go for explicit weight in that case. In action class, I've used... Mm -hmm. Sorry, Explicit in which weight. class? Actions class. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Now, tell me one thing. I have a scenario. Is my screen visible? Yes. So you are trying to automate a web page and there is a section on that web page where some text is dynamic, dynamic, sorry, dynamically updated based on certain actions. You're performing some actions and then that text would get updated. Again, you'll perform some action, then that text would get updated. How would you wait for the text of an element to change? So which weight will you use here? Fluent weight or explicit weight or implicit weight? I think we should use here fluent weight because some specific action we are waiting for. So, so see, you will be going for explicit weight here because you are waiting for the text of an element to change, right? It's it's related to that element only, right? The text at first it might be a red, and then that text might get changed to user login successfully. Then that text might change to dashboard is successful or is visible. Mm -hmm. So that kind of text is getting changed. So you will have to go for explicit weight in this case. <clears throat> right? Okay. Now, So you have a button. Yeah, is the screen is visible to you, right? <clears throat> sorry. You have a button that is disabled. Is sorry, the screen sharing is screen not, is not visible. visible. Sorry, yeah, sorry for that. So now it is visible to you, right? Yes. You have a button that is disabled. And when you are loading that page, then that button is getting clickable after 10 seconds. How would you handle this scenario using weight? First is you will have to use weight because 
it is becoming clickable after 10 seconds only. So which kind of weight you will use here? Yeah. Implicit weight. No, you'll go for explicit okay. weight. No. Explicit weight. Right. Because see, you are looking for that button only. Specific you are waiting time. for that action, trying to interact to that button. You are trying to perform a handshake, but the other person is not ready for the handshake. Then what would happen is you will have to wait for it. So you'll wait for that thing to come, right? So page is getting loaded, but it is not being clickable, right? It is disabled initial stage. Then it is getting enabled, right? Okay, great. So you got an ex you got now idea about explicit weight, implicit weight fluent weight as well right now what are alerts and how will you handle them in selenium alerts are like a pop-up screens that mm -hmm. uh, are different from windows but they are like small pop-ups mm -hmm. we can mm -hmm. like uh, handle them using like uh, get text Right. Send keys. Right. Uh, alert dot accept. Alert dot dismiss. Right. So you are going in the right direction. Alert dot accept. But what is alert? You are using this alert in Selenium. You will be using it. But what is alert? Alert is a kind of like pop up. Like whenever we are clicking or something or any action is performed after that, it gets generated. Mm -hmm. Right. So alert is the class. Alert, okay, no. So see, I'm I'm yeah, I'm asking you with respect to Java itself. Is that a class? Is that a method? Is that an inter interface? What what is alert? I got that idea that you have got an idea of alert, how it would be in UI, but with respect to Java, what is alert? Hmm. So alert is a class. Alert is a class. Okay. See, actually, alert is an interface, Inter right? Which you will be using to switch to some particular alert you will be accepting you so all these are the different methods which you will be using in the alert so i'm telling you the same i'm showing you the sample code for that yeah uh, let me share the screen once it is uh, there See, this is the sample code for alert, right? You have this web driver, driver equal to new Chrome driver, and you can navigate to a web page that triggers a prompt alert, right? Then you will switch to that alert, right? Switch. And you will send keys to that. Then you will accept it, and then you will close the browser. So this is how you will deal with the alert, right? Okay. okay. Which are the locators that you are aware about? ID, class, mm -hmm. XPath, CSS selector, link okay. text, partial uh -huh. link text. Okay. Wait. Which is the design pattern that you have used in your test automation framework? We are using page object model. Mm -hmm. Like we are having a separate operations and flow from the verification. Like... Mm -hmm. uh, this like test scripts are separate from the object repository. Mm -hmm. We have a page factory which uses page factory dot init element method okay. for uh, initializing the web elements. Mm -hmm. So why are you using page factory? It is a use as a technique used for a page object model. Mm -hmm. So what is the difference between page factory? and page object model in the page factory we use the find by annotation mm -hmm. for uh, specific uh, web elements mm -hmm. to define the web elements and in uh, page object model we use uh, by for uh, defining a specific web element okay so what is page factory is that also a design pattern 
it's a technique used uh, hmm. in a page object model okay see i'll tell you the answer for this question so you can get this question in a real time interview page object model is an approach for design it's one of the design pattern that you rightly mentioned page factory is actually a class okay what is page object model it is used for separating page objects and scripts and test that you were telling page factory is a technique to implement form itself right by annotation is used here here it is using find by annotation actually the difference in annotation is also there by find by how will you remember find by generally people do get confused in this also one technique to remember this is you have page factory p and f so here you will get f here as well find by but here you don't have this factory f or something so just mm -hmm. buy here right so here it requires initialization of every object. It does not require the initialization of every object, right? So this is how you can tell. Okay, how would you read the data from an Excel file? Uh, like if that is an XLS file, mm -hmm. we will use XSSF workbook. And if mm -hmm. it is a XLSX file, we will have, uh, we will use HSSF workbook. Mm. And first of all, we'll create the object of the file and that we will pass inside uh, the XSF, XSSF workbook. Mm. And after that, we'll uh, go to the specific sheet of that workbook. And then uh, we will uh, use uh, row and columns, get last row num or get uh, last cell num mm. methods to go to the particular row and columns inside that worksheet of the work. Hmm. Okay. Now, let me share my screen. So this is one of the framework, hybrid framework that I have created, right? And I have a base class here, wherein I am having uh, different uh, methods. So one method is to ensure which browser will I use in my test automation. I might be using Chrome, I might be using Firefox, Edge, Okay, and I have one more method in which I am using read properties file here. So there's one method from which I am reading the configuration file, which I want to uh, use in my automation framework. Now I have hooks file, hooks.java. So this is a hybrid framework. It's a combination of uh, multiple frameworks. And I have used BDD as a way to design the test here right but when i am declaring this read properties no i am getting this error here so how can we resolve this errors right so this method read properties file is present in the base right you are able to understand the question how can i resolve these errors so let's say you are working in a team i am your junior person and uh, I'm, I'm saying to you that I'm stuck at one place, right? Mm -hmm. You need to see this code and you need to assist me technically or else you might get this uh, thing when you are doing code review, right? Can you go to base? Yes, yes. So base is the heart of the framework. Base is a class wherein I have defined web driver driver. I have initialized driver here, right? I'm mm -hmm. uh, initializing driver here and uh, I'm having these methods to launch the browsers.
hooks. Mm -hmm. Hooks file. Yeah, hooks is actually one of the class that I have used. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So let this be an open question for the people who are watching this video. So you can put your answers in the comment section of the video. How can I resolve these errors? Right? Okay. Okay, Yamini, I am done with the interview. Do you have any questions for me?